CC. How are you guys doing this morning? Awesome. If I haven't had an opportunity to introduce myself, my name is Pastor AC. I am the NCC Forney Campus Pastor. And as always, uh, it is an honor to be able to share the Word of God with you guys this morning. Uh, we've been going through a series called Describe God. And I want to give a very similar disclaimer this morning, as Pastor Ann did last week, that with our finite minds, we cannot fully understand an infinite God, right? There's no way for us to be able to communicate fully who he is in a 20 to 25 minute message. But there is comfort in knowing this, is that he wants to be known, right? That he's revealed himself in the word of God and everything we need to know about God is in the Bible. And so that's what we're going to do today is look into uh, one of the characteristics of God and what he says and who he says he is. So let's pray together uh, as we get going. Father, we thank you so much, Father, the opportunity and the honor to be in your house once again. We thank you that it is in this place where your desire is to speak to us, God, your desire is to meet with us. And so as we go into this time of, of digging into the word and, and, and the message, God, that you've given us, God, we pray that we're able to take it, Lord, that we're able to apply it, Lord, and build our lives on a firm foundation, to build our lives on your word, Lord. Father, I pray for anybody that's here in this room or anybody that's joining online right now, fill this place with your presence, God. It's already here, God. Your presence is already here. And I pray that your presence, God, will go into every home right now, wherever people may be, if they're driving, if they're at work, wherever they may be, Holy Spirit, go there and meet with them. We thank you, Father, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Change is always happening. Would you guys agree with that statement before we go any further? Change is always happening. Life is always changing. We are always changing. Every single day, we change our hairstyles. Shout out to Pastor Aaron. You can see he got a haircut. We change our weight, whether it's by choice or not. Fashion changes. Everything changes. Has anybody ever looked at a picture of an old you and thought, what was I thinking? Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about, your fashion, your hairstyle, or maybe you looked at an old picture and you thought this, man, I was a lot thinner then, okay? Nobody raise your hand on that one. Or maybe I was in good shape, or man, I was a lot heavier then, or man, what was life like before kids? You ever see those pictures, right? Those of you that are parents and you're like, what was life like before kids? Debbie and I start talking about that. It's like, I don't even remember because we've had kids pretty much since we got married, right? But pictures have a great way of reminding us of how much life changes. Now, I want to take you down memory lane this morning and show you some changes that have happened in my life. So let's take a look at a few pictures here. This is Debbie and I at her quinceanera, and I was, if you know anything about the culture, I was her chambelan, uh, which means I was the one that walked her down the aisle of her quinceanera and did her vats and everything. So this is us. That's wannabe gangster Aaron right there. Let's go to the next picture. Some of y'all remember Zoom In, Zoom Out at Townies Mall. You've got those pictures still, but you're hiding them. You know you got the poker cards in the back and the dice falling. That was us at Zoom In, Zoom Out there. Let's go to the next one. This was my emo stage, you guys. I'm so glad that God continued to work in me. But hey, to my credit, I would always get stopped by girls and be like, how do you keep your hair so healthy? And I'm like, I used to take care of my hair a lot back then. Let's go to the next one. This is when we were pregnant with baby Nora. Uh, who is now 11 years old. So that's her right there in Debbie's tummy. Let's go to the next one. This is when we first started attending NCC. That's the entrance right there. It looks a lot different, right? We used to come in through this side as soon as you go straight out. Um, so you can see that we were there, and that was Isa and Nora. And then this next picture here was this, uh, this past week. We were at Angeles Camilla's wedding, so... Yeah, life has changed quite a bit, and pictures have a great way of reminding us of that. And as I was putting these pictures together, I'm, I'm thankful for the changes that have happened. I'm thankful that I no longer have that haircut, that emo haircut, but I'm also thankful for this, and if you're taking notes, write this down. We change, but God does not. We change, God does not. 
And there's a great comfort in knowing that God doesn't change, that he doesn't change his mind, that he doesn't change his characteristics, that he doesn't change his plan for our lives. God is immutable, meaning he does not change. And that's the title of my message today is God is immutable. Look at what Malachi 3.6 says. It says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. James 1.17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Shadow of turning caught my attention, and as I started to to study what shadow of turning meant in this verse right here, let me explain to you what it means, because it's very important before we go any further to know that God doesn't change. The shadow of turning refers to our perspective on the sun. The sun eclipses, it moves, and it casts its shadow. The sun rises, and the sun sets. It appears, and it disappears every day. It comes out of one tropic and enters into another at a certain season of the year. But with God, who is light itself, in him there is no darkness at all, and in him there is no change. I don't know about you guys, but when I read that, it brings comfort to know that God does does not change, that he is constant. Now this, this concept of God not changing in ancient times was a foreign concept because Jewish people grew up knowing of a God that does not change. But Gentiles, those that are not Jewish, grew up, and when the gospel of Jesus was being spread, it was a foreign concept to them. Here's why. In ancient times, pagan gods were known to change. They demanded one form of worship in one place and in another form of worship in another They were changeable, they were fluctuating, they were inconsistent, they were unpredictable. For example, in Scandinavian mythology, a lot of you, any Marvel fans in the house, you've heard the name Loki, right? Loki was known to be a trickster god. He would play tricks on people. The Celtics worshipped or had a god named Logue. And and often, Logue was also known as a trickster god, but often he took the form of an elderly woman in order to trick people into thinking that he was weak and harmless, and right when they thought that, he would attack. The Romans had a goddess named Laverna, who was known for lying, for cheating, and for stealing. She could be nice in one moment and completely absent of any moral compass the next, just like that. So until the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ, no Gentile, meaning no Jewish, non-Jewish person, had ever heard of a God who never changed or was like us humans who our moods and our temperaments change, right? Don't look at your spouse right now. But y'all know that we have our moods changing. And Gentiles didn't know of a God that didn't change. So imagine what it must have felt like to constantly be on the edge and live in fear, not knowing what your God was going to do that day. Imagine thinking, will he or she be pleased with me today? Imagine worshiping or serving a God that you thought, today we had a good day, but I don't know what tomorrow's going to be like. Can I truly trust this God, or will they trick me? So when God, Yahweh, is being introduced and the gospel of Jesus is spreading all across the world, now people are starting to hear that there's a God who is consistent. That there's a God who will love you today and he will love you tomorrow. There's a God who will not mislead or trick you, that his plans for you today are great and his plans for you tomorrow will be great. Numbers 23, 19 says this, God is not man that he should lie. Let's just stop and and think about that for just a second because I think that our view of God can be affected with our experiences that we've had with people. When we hear the term father, maybe, God being referred to a father, that can limit how we view our father, our heavenly father, based on our earthly experience with our father here. And so it's important for us to know that God is not man that he should lie or son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not fulfill it? Yesterday, as I was putting some finishing touches on my message here at the office, I texted my girls, my two older ones, 
And I said, hey, let me ask you a question. How does it make you feel to know that God will not change, that he loves you today and he'll love you tomorrow? And honestly, I just wanted to hear their perspective, but I love their answers so much, and they were so honest and real that I'm going to share them with you this morning. I asked for their permission, by the way. That's one thing I learned about being a pastor is, like, ask for your kids' permission before you put up a picture or you use them as an example, right? One of my girls said, I think for me it makes me feel better. Like, when I make a mistake and I tend to kind of beat myself up about it, but then I just remind myself that he still loves me no matter what. He'll always love me. Sometimes it's kind of hard to believe that, though. Can anybody agree with that? Another one of my girls answered this. She says, it makes me feel very glad. Though though we will never fully understand God, I can be reassured that no matter how big I mess up, he's not going to be like, you know what? It's okay. Psych, die. That's what she put. (laughs) Laughing emoji, laughing emoji. And then she put this. She said, I can trust that at least one person can be patient with me, even though I'm so freaking messed up. Laughing emoji. That one got me because it's funny to think about that in the laughing emojis, but I agree with her. I'm messed up. You're messed up. And I'm so thankful that he doesn't change, that he's there to comfort us. See, there are things that we don't understand about God, but he wants us to know him, and he has revealed all that we need to know about him in the Bible. Look at what Psalm 46.10 says. It says, be still and what? Know that I am God. He's not playing hide and seek from us. He's not saying, hey, let's play this game where you really never truly know who I am. He's revealed who he is in the word of God. He wants to be known. And one of the best ways that we can know what the Father is like is through the life of Jesus. As Jesus walked this earth and we start to see what he displayed and what people saw in Jesus' lives, we get an idea of what the Father is like. Let me prove it to you. John 14, 7 through 9, look at what Jesus says. It says, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Why? Because you've seen me, is what Jesus is saying. So then Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Basically saying, you don't want to know what the Father is like? Look at my life. Everything that I've displayed. Now, here's my action step. Typically, we do the action step at the end of the message, right? But my action step is for you to do your own study on the following list of characteristics of God. So let's put this slide up here. God is compassionate. We see that in the life of Jesus in Matthew 14, 14. The Father is merciful. We see that in the life of Jesus in Luke 6, 36. He's forgiving. We see that in the life of Jesus in Matthew 9, 1 through 8. He judges unrepentant sin, meaning sin that we don't bring to him and say, God, I confess it. Forgive me of this, God. I repent of this. Change my thinking, change my mind. That's the sin that God judges, that the Father judges. Luke 13, 5, he is love. We see that in the life of Jesus, as he says in 1 John 4, 8. So as I read this list, I am thankful that God does not change. Why? Because I need his compassion today. I'm thankful that God does not change because I need his mercy today. I need his forgiveness today. I need his love today. How many of you see something on this list right now that you would be honest enough to say, I need that right now? Come on, raise your hand if you're with me. Aren't you thankful that God doesn't change? That he's immutable? As I read this list, I am comforted. And I'm also comforted by this. Let me encourage you with something. If right now you're facing a difficult moment, right, or there may be something right around the corner that we don't know we're about to face, let me share something that has helped me. My confidence and my comfort comes from reflecting on his track record in my life and knowing that he doesn't change. What do I mean by his track record? It's me looking back and remembering the many times that he's made a way when I thought there would be no way, right? It's remembering the many times that he's provided for our family. The other day I was driving with my my baby girl, Nora, and I was telling her, I was like, 
when you guys hear us be grateful, we have like a blessing jar in our house where we'll write on a piece of paper something that's happened and, and we put it in the jar. And I'll be honest, we've always been grateful, but gratitude is something that you get better at over time, right? That you develop over time. And I was telling her, I was like, the reason we're so grateful today about even the smallest things is because you guys were young, but there was a time where we had to worry about what we were going to eat the next day, where we had to figure out. And she's like, I loved breakfast for dinner every single day. I was like, we didn't. (laughs) They didn't know the difference. But as I look back at God's track track record in our life and how he brought us out of difficult situations, my confidence and my comfort comes from that. Why? Because I know that if he's the the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, he's going to continue to provide for me. He's going to continue to provide for you. This is not the one moment where God will not come through. That's inconsistent with his character. So whatever it is that you're facing right now, look back at the times that God has come through for you. And remember those things. Remember that he restored your marriage. Remember that he restored your relationship with your son or your daughter. Remember that he healed. Remember that he came through for you time and time again. He does not change. And our confidence and our comfort comes from reflecting on his track record in our lives and knowing that he doesn't change. One of my favorite verses, if not my favorite verse, is Psalm 37, 25. David says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I've, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. This is King David speaking from personal experience, not what he heard someone else say. He's not reciting a message that he heard a pastor preach. He's not sharing notes that he took at one point. This is his personal experience. And this is what King David is saying in this verse. He said, I started to notice that God is faithful when I was young. But now that I'm old, he's still faithful. He does not change. And this is my prayer, is that I would get to the end of my life and be able to say I was once young and now I'm old, but I never saw the righteous forsaken and I never saw my children begging for bread because God continued to provide over and over and over and over what we needed every single time. Earlier this year, um, in my time of prayer, I started to feel that God was asking me to change, to make a change and make a transition out of the job and the career that I had for the last five years. And when I started to feel it, I'm like, I need to pray a little longer, right? Because this does not make sense. I've got it good where I'm at. A lot of you know that I've been working for Mr. Eddie Opel for the last five years at Extreme Air Services, and it just did not make sense. But the more that I prayed, I felt like God was like, but I'm calling you somewhere else. And so what I did is, is I was like, well, God, I don't know. Let me, let, me, let me bring in some trusted voices, right? So I went to my trusted voices and I said, hey, this is what I've been feeling and here's why I'm feeling it. And God confirmed it through them. And then I went to Debbie and I was like, hey, what do you think? Let's pray about this. And she started to feel the same way. And I was like, okay, it's time to make a change. See, what I've realized is that now that I look back, is the older I get, is I realize that when I start to feel too comfortable, I'm probably going to get stagnant. And I'm not going to grow. And so logically, it made no sense. I'm like, no, like, I'm good. I'm good. And God's like, I'm asking you to trust me. So those of you that have been around me have known that for the last two weeks since I've made that choice, it's been hard to find my rhythm again. Everything has been thrown off. I'm completely out of my comfort zone. I'm walking into a company now where I know no one's names and I'm starting to learn people's names all over again. My schedule is different. I don't know a single person there. I'm having to learn a whole new skill. Nothing is the same. And when I tell you it's been extremely challenging, it's been extremely challenging. I'm out of my comfort zone. Have you ever had a season where it feels like everything is changing? Like, nothing can prepare you for the birth of a child and how much that's going to throw your schedule off. Right, moms and dads? Or moving to a whole new place or a whole new school and being away from your friends or the community that you were so used to? 
Or how about sending a kid to college? Or Escamillas, having two of your kids get married in one year. Like no one prepares you for that kind of stuff. Everything feels like it's changing. Or on a more serious note for some of you, how do you prepare for divorce? When you ask yourself, what do I do with my life now? How do you prepare for losing your job when you were used to a certain lifestyle or certain income? How do you prepare for losing a loved one? Maybe you think I was so used to doing life with them. We had our routine, and I don't know what to do without them now. What do you do when you thought things were going to go a certain way and they completely change? You're reaching for some stability, for something familiar, but everything is unfamiliar and it's scary. Before I made this change, we were in staff prayer on a Wednesday morning and I walked over right over here and I knelt down. And as soon as I started to pray, I felt like the Lord gave me this vision. Again, this is before I changed careers or made the job change or any of that stuff. But I love how the Lord gives you things that later on make sense, right? And in this vision, I saw myself in this house, and it was almost like an earthquake was happening, and things were shifting, and furniture was moving, and pictures were falling off the walls, and all these different things. And and all of a sudden, my eyes go to this square, and I walk over to that square, and as as soon as I stand on that square, I was firm, and I was solid, and it was like I was standing strong. Now, mind you, everything around me was still shifting. Picture frames were falling and furniture was still moving and all these different things. But I felt the Lord tell me this. This is what it looks like to build your life on a firm foundation, to be strong, to find safety in me. I pray that that encourages you. What do you do when everything around you feels like it's changing? You hold on to the one who doesn't. He is our firm foundation. He is our solid rock. He is dependable. He can be trusted. He will provide comfort for you today, and he will provide comfort for you tomorrow. He will love you today, and he will love you tomorrow. He will forgive you today, and he will forgive you tomorrow, and he will not leave you. I promise you. His promises are for today and for tomorrow. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. Father, I thank you. I sense your presence in this place. God, I thank you, Jesus, that you are our firm foundation. And I pray for anyone right now, God, life has been shaky. Everything has been unfamiliar. Everything has been shifting and moving, and it just feels like you have not been able to find some stability. Let this message be a reminder to hold on to the one who doesn't change. He's still here. He's still here. I feel the Lord putting this on my heart for someone, but somebody is either here right now or watching and on online and You remember your experience with God's love years ago when you felt like you were doing everything right, but it felt like you've wandered off and you've kind of taken a detour. And so you're back here today and you're wondering if that same love is still there for you. And and I just feel like the Lord wants to remind you, I do not change. I still love you. And so my encouragement for you, whoever you are, receive his love this morning. He's still crazy in love with you. He did not get distracted by the things that you did wrong. He did not get distracted by what you you did that you're not proud of. He still loves you. And I want to give an opportunity, if you're in this place today and you know that you have not given your life to Jesus, that he's not Lord of your life, let's start there. Let's make that first step this morning together. So with everyone repeating after me, can we say this prayer? Say, Jesus, I give you my life. I ask that you be in control. Forgive me of my sins. Make me clean and help me to live for you. 
Amen. Amen. Can we give it up for anyone this morning who's making that decision for the first time? Listen, if you prayed that prayer, your next step is very, very clear. Sign up for Connect Track, okay? This is not like, hey, we're going to get you and you know, we're going to spam you or anything. But this is, uh, we've been, spent time and a lot of prayer in putting this together, talking about who Jesus is and what salvation means and what we believe here at NCC and how we can help you discover the areas that God has gifted and talented you in. Because everyone is gifted. Every single one of you is gifted in some way. You may not see it right now, but you are. So sign up for that. Um, and we're going to continue our service. We're going to do something very special this morning that we do uh, periodically, and that's take communion. So if you'll do me a favor, at the bottom of your chair, you should have your communion elements there. We're going to go ahead and pull those out together. And, and as always, we always like to make it clear that you do not have to be a member of NCC or have gone through a class in order for you to partake in communion this morning. The Bible says that anyone who is a follower of Jesus can take communion with us. If you're watching online right now, go grab some bread and juice. That's fine. Okay? But the word communion, to give you some context and some information here on what communion is, communion carries the word union. Communion is a result of a union with Christ. It's the sharing of common thoughts and feelings and experiences. It's sharing in the death and burial of Jesus. I remember growing up and taking communion, but I was really just excited about the bread and the juice, right? And waiting for the leftovers after service. Because as a kid who, whose dad and mom was very involved in leadership, we got the leftovers after. So I was like, great, I'm going to get all that grape juice. But the older I've gotten, the more that I appreciate this time. Because we get to do this to remember what Jesus did for us, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. It's an honor to be able to do this today. So hold on to the elements till after we pray. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 reads, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for the sacrifice of Jesus. Father, we thank you that because of the blood of Jesus, every single sin can be forgiven today. From the things that we categorize as big to the things that we call small, Lord, every single sin has separated us from a holy God. But because of Jesus, he paid the penalty for the sin, the penalty that we deserved. God, we're thankful today, Jesus, that he took our place. And, and Jesus, that your body was broken, God, so that we could receive healing. And so that we would not continue to beat ourselves up. But you were beaten and bruised for our transgressions, for our iniquities. So today, as we take these elements, we do this in remembrance of what you did for us. We thank you, Father. Amen. We can go ahead and take the elements at this point. Well, guys, it's been an honor and a blessing to be with you guys this morning. Have you guys enjoyed service today? Come on. Can we give God some praise today? So thankful for him. We love you guys. We normally have announcements, but the only thing we want you to do today is take a good nap and have a good Sunday meal, okay? Feel free to connect with someone outside. God bless you guys. We'll see you next Sunday.